Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Amr Siddiqui. Um, I was born in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I grew up to Jain uh, Hindu parents and uh, grew up in a household, I guess, that, you know, very nurturing, right? At the end of the day, it was uh, parents were definitely people that looked, uh, looked, looked up to what their kids were doing, brought them up in an environment to the best of their abilities. Uh, my dad is the eldest of 12 in his family, so the eldest male. Uh, so it was, he was always the one taking on responsibility for his families, his brothers and his sisters, and he treated his family kind of the same way. Sometimes actually sacrificed his own family for his brothers and sisters' goods and, and kind of what they did. Um, at the age of four, moved to New York City. Uh, grew up in Flushing, Queens. And um, again, there uh, we grew up in an environment that was, again, very uh, nurturing from a family environment point of view. But again, being first generation in the Americas, uh, living in an environment that you don't know the people around you, and you're kind of in, in a place where um, you are learning as well as your parents are learning. They're trying to get established. They're trying to get their foothold in what they're doing in life. Uh, it, was, uh, it was challenging, right? We were, we were not very well off. We, I would actually say we were below the midline, you know, high end of poor, low end of, of, of middle. And, um, and uh, we, we grew up right in the, um, uh, the streets of, of New York City, of Flushing, Queens. And um, that was, you know, alhamdulillah for 12 years. So I, so I, I started second grade there, oh, not sorry, second grade, started um, about uh, kindergarten, first grade there. And then um, up to the age of 16, 17, 18, uh, it's kind of like a regular childhood. You're going through your life, you're making your friends, you're kind of getting to know everybody around you. Uh, but then during that time frame, I also started the community around you. It's very tight, right? So I met a lot of Indian friends, a lot of Pakistani friends, a lot of Bangladeshi friends. And we just started noticing uh, during that 16, 17, 18 year old time frame when kids' minds are curious. They want to know what's going on in life. Why am I doing certain something this way versus, you know, kind of why are they doing it that way? And one of the families that were really close to us um, the kids would always be at Sunday school uh, for, uh, for Islamic Sunday school. And we'd all be like, we just got through school five days a week. Why are you going to school again on a Sunday, right? Like, we're outside playing. But then you start seeing their environment. You start seeing the way they act and behave. And that has a little bit of an influence on you. Uh, that wasn't the time when I kind of considered uh, everything that I was going through and what I did. Uh, but then, alhamdulillah, I got accepted to go to a college at West Virginia University. And when I went to West Virginia, it was just kind of more curiosity. You started thinking about what you're doing, why you're doing it, what's the purpose of life, right? Why was I born? What's the greater meaning of what I have to get accomplished in this world? And alhamdulillah, there uh, I met one of the local imams who, again, it was probably, you know, a five by five little mosque in, in the middle of Morgantown, West Virginia. And um, he kind of brought me in with the purpose of just kind of teaching me, right? Not, not really thinking I was going to convert. Uh, but then, alhamdulillah, I did. First, first freshman year of college, uh, I converted. So back in 86, 1986, I converted. And that's how I kind of started learning. And uh, it just happened to be that it, was, it happened to be a Sunni mosque. It could have been a Shia, Shia mosque. It could have been a you know, Wahhabi mosque. It could have been anything just to learn kind of the concepts. And at that time, I, was, I didn't know there was a difference. Islam was Islam to me. Didn't know that there was all these sects and kind of what we did and how we got there. Um, and then alhamdulillah, from that, that time period on, I think we've just been learning about it, just been understanding what Islam is, why it is what it is. Um, I think understanding the difference of gr growing up in an environment, you know, for, for those of you out there in the community that know a lot of people in the Jain faith, uh, they're Gujarati, very, very kind of, uh, Jain is considered probably, uh, if you think about the hierarchy in the, in the Hindu religion, Jain is, you know, close to the top. Um, so, so very, very religious from a perspective of, um, you know, everything that Islam teaches. It's, it's kind of take care of yourself, don't lie, uh, don't cheat, treat others like you want to be treated. Uh, they don't eat meat, they're vegetarian, um, so on and so forth. So if you really think about the upbringing that I had, yes, I didn't pray, yes, I didn't do X, Y, and Z, but also I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't eat meat. I didn't do all the things that you would consider kind of part of what you would consider anybody else that was thinking about converting, saying, wow, these are going to be tough. Um, so actually, the reason I, I believe, alhamdulillah, that I am a, the Muslim that I am today and what, what I've done is because of my parents, right? They raised me in a way that allowed me to be a better Muslim. I just happened to have, you know, Allah just provided me the light to kind of get to the, the path that I'm in now. Uh, so during college, uh, I think very similar circumstances. I kind of learned on my own. I read books and... And again, at that time, there was no internet, there was no Amazon, you know, none of those things where you could order books online. You read what you got. You read what was in the local masjid, and you talked to people, right? Um, so again, no concept of 
what's the difference between a, a Sunni and a Shia and all the other sects that were out there. It was just learning the religion, which was the kind of the basics of what I was trying to get done. Um, I, I probably, you know, first couple of years still just praying namaz was with the book on the floor because, you know, when you kneel, you're kind of trying to read exactly what you have to say when you go into ruku and what you're going to do and how to make a zan. And so it's kind of just like, just like you're studying for a test or you're studying to be a doctor or a lawyer. You're kind of learning the basics of what your profession is going to be all about. Um, I would say halfway, during, halfway through college, my parents found out that I had converted. Um, Obviously, uh, I think in, in all Asian cultures, it doesn't make a difference what religion you're a part of. When your parents find out you're doing something they don't want you to be doing, uh, it becomes a massive, massive conversation. And it did. And I think still to this day, it's, um, I, would, I would say it's, it's, it hasn't brought us closer, but it's closer than, we, than we, when we were back then. right? Um, and, and from that day forward, you kind of you learn to live your life through what you want to become in life. because. Um, they did what any parent would do, uh, which was to say, if you're going to go move forward in this path, we can't support you. We're not going to live by you. We're not going to help you. And the parents put you in a position to try to make you change your decisions. So whether it's smoking, drinking, doing this or doing that, uh, to my bad thing was becoming a Muslim, right? Um, and uh, so, so they put, they, I guess they pressured me into a, into a position where I had to go learn on my own. I had to go live with friends. I had to go uh, make money on my own, and I had to go to school on my own, and I had to support myself. And alhamdulillah, that, uh, uh, in, a, in a certain way, it makes you a much better person later in life. That time during your life, you definitely feel like, uh, I made the wrong decision, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting myself in a really bad spot here. Um, but alhamdulillah, since then, I mean, uh, mashallah say, you know, I've got three beautiful kids today, got married, and, uh, and alhamdulillah, I've kind of taught them through, through the basics that I know of Islam. Um, you know, Alamiya always provides an open a, a door for you when you when you think one door closes, another door opens up. Uh, so actually, back then when my parents kind of we went through this hard times, uh, I met up with a friend who I went to high school with, just bumped into him at the mosque, and uh, obviously he was surprised, saying, "What are you doing here at the mosque?" Like, you know, I, I know you, I grew up with you. Um, his family actually took me in. So. Alhamdulillah, there were four brothers and a sister. Uh, they lived in Bayside, Queens, and pretty much I became the fifth brother, right? I was, I was part of the family. I celebrated Eid with them. I was pretty much in their house every day, learning how a Muslim family lives together. And it's still different, right? It's still, you're not, you're not part of the family, but you are very, very part of the family, and you feel it inside, right? You don't, you don't show it outside. But I think this is where I saw the, for me, the brighter side of Islam, you know, where people take you in, there's no reason this family had to take me in. There's no reason this family had to treat me like one of their own and uh, teach me the religion, specifically the way they knew the religion, right? So they happened to be Sunnis as well, right? Another just kind of chance in faith. It could have been anybody, right? Um, and so I learned from them. I mean, uh, to, to this day, they are my brothers. Uh, to this day, you know, we, we call each other up every month. We talk about each other. They're still in New York. And, um, you know, they've... Uh, the oldest brother, he's come down, and as, you know, when all three of my sons were born, he's the one that came down, and you know, kind of what you know, we shaved the head and we do all that stuff. He's come down and do, done all that. He's the one for two of them that read read the azan in their ears, you know, when they were born. So alhamdulillah, it's truly like my, my older brother and kind of what they've taught me through my life. Um, I think as life has progressed, I've I've um, alhamdulillah, I married my wife Sadika, um, who who at the time uh, again I didn't know the differences between Sunni Shia and so on and so forth, but I, I met her at, my, at a, uh, uh, the family that I just mentioned, youngest brother that I was the closest with, m met her at his wedding. And, uh, and since then, we just kind of started talking, the families started talking, and the families kind of talked to each other and said, hey, what's going on, you know, who is he? And we kinda, I kind of asked about her to her uncle and aunt, and, and it kind of progressed to where we are in life now. Um, and that's kind of when I started picking up on the differences, right? So um, uh, the, the first time I actually probably understood the difference that there was different sects was actually in West Virginia when I was in college. Uh, the imam there, and, and maybe every Friday at the sermon, maybe there was 20 people in the room. I mean, that's how small the town was and how many Muslims there were from around the world in that little town. Um, one, of, one of the sermons that he was talking about was one of the people in the community had converted to Shia, Shiaism. And I didn't know what it was, right? I was just like, oh, maybe he did something bad, and he's, you know, they're talking about why it's okay to go do that, right? And I had no concept of it. Uh, but then after I got married, 
I met my, uh, my wife's uh, uh, parents in Pakistan, her sisters, and then her cousins, and their in-laws. And, and alhamdulillah, I think, I think the, what, what, I, what I notice in, um, in a lot of the people that I meet is um, there's absolutely discrimination across the world. There's discrimination in every faith. There's discrimination in every religion. There's discrimination in every sect, right? right? They took me in as one of their own. They, uh, they, they kind of knew about me, and they'd met me over the phone, but they'd never met me in person. Uh, you know, she, she had come here for, for her studies and for work, and uh, they happened to live in Pakistan, so we had never met face to face. So we got my, married through her uncle and aunt and so on and so forth. Um, but they took me in, and there was no, there was no concept of, well, you, 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 you pray like this, or you talk like this, or you believe in this. It was just, what's your belief? And my belief was very simple. I believe in Islam. And a lot of people would ask me, well, what does that mean? And I would say, at the time of Rasulullah, did anybody ask what type of Islam you believe in? You believed in what Rasulullah taught. That's what I believed in. That's what I've learned. That's the books that I read, right? Uh, but then obviously after that, I started seeing the differences in, okay, what happened you know, after, after Rasulullah passed on, after, you know, kind of the imamat was passed on and started reading books like Then I Was Guided, which was probably my first book that I kind of realized, okay, uh, there is some differences here. And, and it's logical. It's not, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any perspective that you would look at to say that there was a political gain here or a, uh, you know, a, a financial gain here. It was all logical. It's based on the time, based on the fact, based on power, based on you know, so many different things, and uh, absolutely all those factors were probably into it. There was financial gain, there was political gain, there was you know, what's the right thing to do by the community, so on and so forth. Um, and to me, logically, again, I, I see Islam as a logical religion, right? There's nothing in Islam that you can debate and say that doesn't make sense. You can ask a lot of questions, but there's usually a very good answer associated with it. Um, one of the reasons I kind of looked into Islam right from the beginning, and sorry I'm going back here a little bit, is because of that. Is because in, you know, my parents absolutely pray. Uh, we have, you know, idols in our home and they still live in the same home we grew up in. And you go to a temple and, but it's the fact of what do the idols do, the stories you hear, the, you know, kind of reading the, the, their, their versions of what, you know, the Quran and, and, the, and, the, and the Bible and so on and so forth. And, and what they call the Bhagavad Gita. And, Understanding that some of those stories, you kind of go, it sounds like a story. It doesn't sound like there's there's anything here. Um, so that kind of sparks your interest. And and Islam was all logic, right? There was no certain reason. Why do you pray? You pray to remember God. Okay, that makes sense, right? There's no nothing you can kind of debate about that. There's a very simple reason behind it. You know, why is the month of Eid and what, what what's the month of Ramadan for? To show sacrifice, to show what you have and how you're how you're more blessed than other people in your lives. Okay, makes sense, right? I mean, it's all logical. There's nothing that somebody could say to you and go, oh, hey, this, you have to believe this way. This, you have to think about this way. Or, you know, do angels exist? I had a tough time with that one, right? Because I was like, yeah, I, I can't really debate that. I can't see it. I don't see it for myself, right? But alhamdulillah, over time, it, that's faith, right? Faith is you either believe in something 100% whether you see it or not. And, and I think that's probably how I've matured as an individual, right? A lot of the things in the beginning, again, you think about it, when you're 18, 19, 20, for all of you watching, you, everybody went through certain moments in their life, whether good, bad, or indifferent, and if you're today in your mid-40s like I am, you probably look back and you go, okay, yeah, that was, you know, kind of a tough situation that I went through, probably wouldn't make the same decision again that you made today. Um, but alhamdulillah, I think that, that's what's helped mature me, uh, kind of bring me to the, to the perspective I'm, I'm at now and help me learn all the different aspects of, of where I am today. So I would still consider myself learning. Um, you know, my kids, uh, alhamdulillah, they absolutely, my, my two older sons were definitely brought up, quote unquote, in a Sunni household. We, we did everything one way. We prayed one way. We, uh, we, we kind of uh, acted one way. But I, my, my youngest one, alhamdulillah, he's eight years old. He's probably the, the you know, as, as much a Shia as anybody else. He's gone to Shia school starting from age two. He goes to Madrasa every Sunday. Uh, you know, he knows, he knows the call to Azan. He knows the differences. He knows why, why not. So in my family, that's the big difference. We, we go to Sunni masjids on Friday for Jummah namaz. But then on, on Juma or on a Saturday or Sunday, we'll be at the Madrasa uh, praying, uh, praying with my, my, my Shia brothers. And, and alhamdulillah, I haven't seen... I think, well, I should I phrase it a different way. What I've seen is just openness. What I've seen is people look at that aspect and they go, that, that's great that you know, you're kind of looking into certain aspects of your life and trying to deliver on different aspects of your life. And, and to me, th there's, there's that, that's the big difference that I've noticed is um, 
definitely the Shia community is a lot tighter community. And, and, I'm, and the reason I say that is because based on my experiences, um, you know, we've lived in a whole bunch of different places in the Americas, in Atlanta, in New York City, Orlando a long time ago, now Orlando again. And we've moved around a lot because of the work that I'm in and what I wind up doing. Um, what you'll find in the Sunni community is definitely Jummah Namaz is the number one kind of thing where people get together and make it happen. Now that's different. I know in Texas and California, probably the Sunni, uh, the, the, the Sunni mef the, uh, community is very tight. They actually have kids programs. They do different types of things. They get the community together. Where we wound up growing up and where my kids wound up growing up, the two older ones, we didn't have that. You, Friday was kind of your religious day, and that was really about it, right? Uh, what I definitely do notice about um, uh, the, the Shia community and the different communities within the Shia community is definitely there's a tight pact. There's a tight group, right? I mean, literally every night, if it's not the kids, it's the adults, it's the ladies. They're getting together at the meth field. There's a, there's a volleyball game going on. There's a softball game going on. There's a golf game going on. There's picnics. There's communities. I mean, so even though you're, bring, you're being brought up in a religion, you're being brought up in a community which is something that we lacked, and, and I, I lacked in, in providing for my, children, my two older children that community in, 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 in making them successful. And inshallah, you know what, just like I learned, hopefully they'll learn and they'll pick these things up and, and become definitely 100 times better Muslim than I am. Um, but, but I think that's one of the big differences that I've noticed in just all my endeavors, right? And, and all the people that I talk to and, and the family members and the, and the relatives that I talk to, uh, that's a big difference. And, and alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm uh, very inquisitive and, you know, probably, you know, people that know me know I'm not, I'm not a shy person. I tend to speak out a lot and, and speak my mind. Um, and alhamdulillah, I've asked a lot of questions of, of Sunni imams and Shia imams. And I'll tell you, at the end of the day, definitely the Shia imams are a lot more scholarly. And, and I generalize when I say that, but uh, I've found it to be true. My personal experiences is that um, most of the Shia imams, they go through a they go through a study. It's like being a profession. It's not, it's not something you wound up doing because you couldn't do something else. You become an imam because you're, like, like you're gonna spend the next six years of your life in college, in universities, learning the language, learning the religion, learning the differences, learning kind of what your subject matter expertise is gonna be. Um, I didn't find that so much in, in, the, um, in, the, in, my, in my Sunni brothers and in, in, the, in, in the imams. They actually sometimes would not want to talk about why the differences are there. Obviously, there are imams that absolutely do talk about it, so you know, it's not that it's a general statement. But, um, but the, 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 the Shia imams definitely were more open. They definitely invited me in and called me any time if you want to ask why this, why that. And they happen to know both sides of it very, very well and definitely more educated in, in the religions overall. Um, so, I, so I think that's, that's always good. Anytime you're open and you're friendly, guess what? Even if, even if your enemy's there, anytime you're open and you're friendly, they're going to see a different aspect to you, and they're going to want, they're going to, they're going to want to learn more about that side of what's going on. Um, and so, inshallah, today and, and you know, for the last now 20, 20 years of my life, approximately, uh, that I've been learning Islam, um, it's, it's still a journey, right? We're still trying to figure out what the next step is, what I have to learn, what the next thing I have to do is. Um, I mean, just little, little things, right? I mean, uh, reading the Quran, I, I haven't read the Quran in Arabic. I'm still learning Arabic, and I try to do my best, but I've read the Quran in English. And, uh, but that's, that's another journey. That's another next step, is try to go figure out how to read it in Arabic and understand Arabic, right? Might be a little bit too much of a goal for me, but, but we'll, go, we'll go try it out, and we'll see, uh, we'll see, inshallah, what happens. Today, who I am versus who I would have been if I had not kind of accepted Islam, um, I would say personality-wise, I would probably be the same person. I mean, I, I, like I said, I grew up in a household, and, and mostly what you learn is what you learn from your parents and your household, right? Um, so I, I don't think I would be a different person. Um, I think the biggest difference in my life and the biggest difference in my children's lives would have been the big difference. I wouldn't have the kids I have today. I wouldn't have the wife I have today. It's very simple. I would have been, I would have been out there enjoying myself. I would have been out there doing different things that were more acceptable um, in, in the culture and in, and in the religion uh, if, you, if you kind of really go by that path. And um, um, uh, I, I, think, I think to this day, um, I could still say that I haven't, I haven't done anything that, that would make me think that I've kind of crossed what my parents have taught me, um, which is a tough thing. I think, I think growing up and not having those, if I wouldn't have converted at the age of 17, 18 when I did in college, college would have been a different experience. And not for the, good, not for the right reasons, for the wrong reasons. <laughs> and um, and it's, it's just, 
it's just, I think, I think that would have changed my life, right? And, um, and I think, alhamdulillah, this was meant to be at the right time in the right place because uh, for multiple different reasons. And, and for those of you that live in the United States and know West Virginia University, uh, at the time I went to West Virginia University, which was 86 and onward, it was the number one party school in the United States. So um, if I wasn't who I was and I didn't learn the religion at that time and place, I wouldn't be who I am today. Yeah, I'd have, probably have the same personality, but I definitely, I definitely would have done a lot of things and transgressed from what's right versus what's wrong, and just and just have said to myself, "It's okay. It, you can do that. You, you, it's a life. You live it, and you know you kind of you kind of do this and you do that, and you, and it's okay. Everybody else does it, so you can do it as well." I think that's the one big difference I, I definitely notice in myself, and I think my kids will tell you, and my wife will tell you, and me is. Uh, um, when I put my mind to something, and when I say this is going to happen, there's no roadblocks. And I think that's the biggest difference in who I am as a person and what Islam has taught me, is you got to believe and you got to have that faith, right? Every time a door is closed on me, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people in the world that have had um, worse challenges than I have. But you know, when your parents say to you, no more money, you're out of the house. At 17, 18, there's not too many choices you have in this world. Guess what? Allah me opened up a door for me, right? Uh, when that door opened up and I took advantage of it and I worked and I went to school full time and I worked nighttime, I worked the night shift, I worked night 9, 12, 12 midnight to 8 o'clock, I went to school in the daytime, uh, I paid tuition myself, I took the train every day, every night going to work and school. That wouldn't have been me. I, I would have I had a, a luxurious life in, in the realm of what my parents could have afforded. Um, but given that, it made me who I am today. I strive, I work harder, I definitely push myself, I push my kids sometimes probably a little bit too much uh, to try to get them to understand that what they have, alhamdulillah, is 20 times better than what I had growing up. And, and, I, and I would say, you know, socially, that's probably the one biggest difference. Financially, alhamdulillah, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, you know, it's, I definitely believe that you know, it's, it's, it's just like Allah says, Allah's pre-written all this, right? There's, Allah knew before I was born that I was going to go do this and I was going to go make this happen. So um, I definitely have that faith that, uh, that if it wasn't at the age of 18, whether it was at the age of 20 or 22, I was destined to do something different and change my life and become who I am today. Um, and, and, you know, for me, it's, it's really, really different. I mean, my gener this is the first of my generation in this world. Bar none. It, it doesn't make a difference, right? <laughs> That's it. This is where my name starts and this is where my name continues to flow on. And before me, nobody had this name in my lineage. So you kind of think about that. And, you know, again, I don't equate myself to any of the people who have converted Islam in prior lives and generations because I'm nowhere near them. But you think about all the generations today, right, that have starting from the time of Rasulullah to today, all the people that have converted. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. And you think about that and you go, okay, that's, there's something to be proud of, right? From a perspective of you're making a difference in the world. And, and I hope that difference is just like my parents taught me and, and my kids will learn is, you know, it's, it's just about doing the right thing in this world, right? I think Islam just um, confirmed that for me 10 times more, which is do what's right, treat your neighbors like you want to be treated, treat other people like you want to be treated. Uh, don't, don't discriminate, don't segregate. And, and as much as I think sometimes we, we as Muslims, we as Asians, we as you know, this community tend to look outward, sometimes we have to look inward and say, sometimes it's ourselves, it's not others that do this to us. Um, so, you know, there's a, I philosophically can have this conversation for hours about what the differences are, but, um, but I think that's probably one of the biggest things that I've noticed in me. Um, uh, on, the, on the negative side or the challenging side, yeah, my relationship with my parents is still bad. I'm probably not the best Muslim when it comes to treating your parents the right way. Uh, I know I'm not the best Muslim when it comes to treating your parents the right way, uh, just because it is tough. It is tough for me to abide by my religion but still focus on what makes them happy, focus on doing what they think is right. There's always a debate, there's always an argument. There always will be because they have a totally different point of view on what I should be doing with my kids and my life and, 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 and my sons and so on and so forth. You know, food and where to go and what to do and how to meet people and having girlfriends and not having girlfriends and it's okay and this and that. That's, that's just going to continue. And inshallah, you know, Allah will forgive me for, uh, I hope, <laughs> uh, for, for those actions. But um, that's been the tough part, right? So, so my relationship with my parents isn't as strong as 
most people, uh, I guess any person in this world would like it to be. Uh, my relationship with my sister is not as strong because of that, because of the challenges she had to go through when, when I converted and the challenges we had in our family, right? So um, it's just, it, that's, that's the difficult part of it, but alhamdulillah, um, I definitely do believe that the, 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 the journey uh, is going to help. I, I definitely do believe that in, in the faith in the hereafter is I'm hoping Allah, inshallah, forgive me for those sins uh, with a little bit of the good stuff that I do on the other side. So, <laughs> so alhamdulillah, I think, I think the, the, the relationship with just the overall community has been, has been really great. So uh, obviously my wife, uh, her cousins, her, her family are, are absolutely 100%, 110% practicing uh, Shias. And so what, the, the, what, it's, what it's brought me is one, the openness, right? And as I mentioned earlier, um, knowing who I was, knowing that I had kind of, quote unquote, converted to Islam, um, th you know, this was a family, this was a community that accepted me for who I was. They didn't, they didn't say, yes, you could marry my daughter if you, you became a Shia, right? They said, yes, you can marry my daughter as long as you're a Muslim, right? Um, and I think, I think that aspect of that openness and that aspect of that uh, allows me to kind of be who I am today. And then, you know, on a daily basis, like you said, now, uh, you know, her cousins and her family, they all, they all live here in the Orlando area, majority of them. Um, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, I've had the pleasure of getting to know her, her family in Canada and in Pakistan and in India and everywhere else. And I think, I think that provides me that aspect. And, and each one of them knowing that, you know, when I come to the Mehfil, I'm coming for a different reason. When my sons come to the Mehfil, they're coming for a different reason. But we're not judged on that. We're not judged on that certain aspect, right? Um, here in Orlando, I happen to play golf with a whole bunch of guys that, that are, that are uh, also from, from the, from the same, same community. And, and I'm not judged by who I am, right? I'm judged by the person. I'm judged by the ability. Uh, at least I would like to think so in my golf game. But uh, <laughs> um, it, it, I think it inspires me, right? It inspires me to know that, um, um, yes, and, and I'll say this again, that yes, there is discrimination. I absolutely do believe there is discrimination internally within, within the communities. And that, it's not because it's an internal discrimination, it's because we've grown up in our own little cultures, right? If you happen to be kind of from this culture, you think a different way, you act a different way, you get married, you have these different culture things that you do. And if you're from this culture, you're still, you're still you know, part of the part of the al Bayt, but you're doing it a different way. And so there's a little bit of different thought. And if you're from Syria, you're doing it this way. If you're from Iran, you're doing it this way. And I, and I think that that inspires me as a person who, who's kind of seen it from the outside and, and who sees it from the inside to be able to try to make a change, right? And, and inshallah, uh, the more I learn and the more knowledgeable I can become, hopefully that is something that I can enable to bring change to as well. Um, but alhamdulillah, I, I, think, I think the openness, I think the, the aspect of the, the educated imams, um, I think the aspect of the khutbas that happen and, 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 and the, uh, the lectures that happen, you know, probably every Jummah, uh, every, every, uh, every, every weekend, where we're talking about different, different aspects, right? The, the imams come and they talk openly about things that are impacting our youth, openly about things that are impacting the adults, openly about things that are impacting the world. And I think that's what you need. You need those intellectual professionals to come and educate us and educate the world about children, right? Growing up in the Americas, our kids are going to go through a different life than I grew up in. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a first generation person, you know, came here when I was four years old, but we were first generation. All the people I grew up with were first generation. We did not dare do half the things that probably the kids do today just because it's a little easier, right? And, and, um, and the imams talk about that, right? They, they, they get these kids in a room and talk about girlfriends and drugs and you know, what, peer pressure and the, and the kind of situations they get put in. Uh, they bring the parents in and they talk about, hey, when you're raising these kids, it is different. It's not like when you were raising them in India, Pakistan, or Africa, or anywhere else in the world. Uh, there's a different aspect here. There's more openness here. Um, so I think, I think that, that aspect is, is tremendous. Uh, I think the time and effort for all the people that volunteer uh, you know, in, in Sunday schools, in, in all these events that they put together, nobody has to do this, right? They do it out of their love for their religion. They do it out of their love for their kids and their community. And I think the more and more you get of that across the board, I think the more and more open you'll find that other people will be to coming to Islam in general, right? And, and then, then it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of, honestly, it's a matter of luck. It's a matter of what person Allah uh, presents you to meet with on that day and time when you're thinking about, hey, I want to I look into a different religion, 
if you happen to be like me for whatever reason Allah chose me to go through the path of you know the path that I've gone through but I can probably say I, I probably know more and when I say more I'll put that in quotes uh, more about Sunni and Shia and Wahhabism because I've had to learn all three to understand the differences and I, I don't know if that's true for a person born directly into a Sunni family, a person born directly into a Shia family, a person born directly into a Wahhabi family because they're they don't have to put that thought and effort into it. They're basically like, I, I know what I'm learning. My parents have told me it's the right thing. My brothers have told me it's the right thing, whatever. Um, so, so there's a reason. I, I don't know what that reason is yet. Inshallah, one day I'll kind of figure it out for myself and, and, and I'll know, you know what my purpose was and what the journey was all about. Um, but alhamdulillah, till that day, I think, I think the people that I've run into, uh, uh, alhamdulillah, the, the doors that Allah has opened for me, um, uh, the religious aspects of of the emotion and the passion that I find across the bo the board in the Elul Bayt, I mean, I, I would say um, I would say attracts me more and and um, challenges me more mentally to be able to say why, right? And the more times I say why to myself, the more books I open up, the more things I read about, the more things I debate about to say, yeah, I understand this, but this doesn't make any sense. And then obviously there's a good good debate that occurs, and you kind of go, okay, maybe maybe I can understand that aspect of it, right? So I, I think the open conversation, the open debate, is one uh, that in this world is necessary, and I find that a lot more uh, within within the, within the Elul Bayt community, right? As I mentioned before, just because the um, the knowledge comes from a different aspect, the knowledge doesn't come from here's what I learned when I was growing up. The knowledge comes from I went to this university, I spent six years there studying Islam, the different aspects of Islam, and understanding why this happens and that happens. So to me, I think that's probably the greatest aspect of uh, of of where we are today, where I am today in my life, in 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 learning more about the Elul Bayt and and hopefully taking that journey a step closer, you know, towards the end. How Imam Hussein and kind of the uh, the impact of Karbala and and how that kind of impacts me and what I go through and emotionally how how I deal with that. Um, I I think if there's one sacrifice in this world, it doesn't make a difference who you are as long as you're a Muslim that sacrifice enabled us to get to where we are today as Muslims in general. It doesn't make a difference what you believe in. If you're a Muslim, it doesn't make a difference what sect you're in, it doesn't make a difference what your beliefs and your thoughts are. That was the sacrifice that enabled Islam to move forward. Now, if you take that and you add on to it the descriptions, the emotional sacrifices, the physical sacrifices, the mental sacrifices that at that time and place the, the family of Imam Ali had to make and, 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 the, and the kids, what they had to go through. I, th I think it's just like anything else. I think, I think there's not a single person in this world who can see and sit back and watch their family kind of get uh, uh, massacred in the way that that happened. So emotionally, absolutely, that's, that's a, it's a, draining, it's a draining emotion. Uh, it's one that you kind of sit back and you, f and you say to yourself, um, in that time, in that place, knowing that that is what they were going up against, could we as individuals really st step up and go, I know exactly what I'm walking into, right? I'm walking into a massacre. I know my family's gonna get massacred tomorrow. I know they're gonna be embarrassed tomorrow. I know they're gonna be put in front of a test tomorrow. Could I do that? I, that is, that, I mean, that, those are the kind of emotions that I deal with. And when I, when I think about kind of Karbala and I think about the actions that happened there, and again, Muslims on Muslims. So we talk about individually, kind of what you know, where these things go. Um, that is a tough, tough emotion. That is a tough, tough uh, uh, reaction to kind of take in. Um, but I think the more and more I learn about it, I, I, I got to be, I got to be honest with you. I mean, I wasn't educated about this I, in the beginning. Uh, we would go to. Uh, uh, during the month of Muharram, we would go to the Mefil and I would see kind of all the things going on and the, and the physical aspects of what was going on in the morning. I didn't understand it. And, and to me, I think, alhamdulillah, I would say probably over the last five, six years, um, I think speaking more and more to the Imams about that, what happened there, why it was critical, what the reasoning for it was. The, historically, I didn't understand it either. So just historically becoming more aware of why it happened. Um, I, I think that's the one thing absolutely I walk away from is, um, again, it doesn't make a difference who you are in this world. It doesn't make a difference where, what, what seat you're on and what, uh, what group you're a part of. If you're a Muslim, you wouldn't be a Muslim today if that sacrifice hadn't taken place because Islam as we know it, the true religion, the kind of the, 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 um, uh, 
the cleansed religion, it would have been tainted. It, it would have gone different directions. It would have, it would have been pushed out. And I think just like you see in other, other parts of the organizations, there's always a kind of a balance. I think that sacrifice created that balance and put Islam back on the right path.